this is Jacob from Geekenspiel. And I'm Jeff. And we're here with Ken Chan, who's showing us his brand Howdy. new game, The Witching Hour. That's right. So please, tell us about this game. First of all, uh, the art is fantastic. Thank you, I appreciate that. Yes, it's uh, the art artist is uh, Joni Olson, and he is absolutely fantastic, and uh, it's beautiful stuff. So yeah, this is a game that is cooperative, and uh, the concept is you're a coven of witches, plays three to six players, and uh, over the course of the last year, one of you, one or more of you have done something wrong. Mm -hmm. And so everybody's got a secret, uh, at least in the first mission, uh, slash uh, scenario, and uh, everybody is cooperatively attempting to survive the night because your personal demons are manifesting from your corruption for all the bad things that everybody's done. But here's the trick, here's what makes it different than anything else, is that uh, everything you do to help yourself, and you have to help yourself or you die, hurts the person to your left. Everything, all the risk, everything that you do harms your friend, but it's a cooperative game. So you have to manage your, what you're doing to help other, to help, you can't really just be sitting there like, I wanna be nice, no, the game, you have to kind of be mean. So people are like, sometimes like, I am so sorry. So it's just like. So, <laughs> so it's kind of like you're feeling bad about the fact you're hurting someone right. else because you're all supposed to be working together, but the game forces you. To, oh yeah, to if, you, if you just let the demons sit on top of you, you're gonna die. Mm. So, um, so uh, there's a few things that are kind of innovative about it. Uh, first, it's, uh, it, though it is a cooperative game, a lot of people, when we were playtesting, magic players, competitive players like it because it does have that meanness. Uh, <laughs> but also, it ha but the other thing that they like about it is that there's no real chance for an alpha gamer. And I'll explain why. So what's going to happen is you get spells. Uh, normally, there'd be decks out here you could buy from. Uh, don't worry about that too much. But um, you, everybody draws their hands simultaneously from a deck. And anything you buy immediately goes on top, so you get that, that first hour. You don't have to wait. Okay, it's so it's not like a typical That's deck builder where no, it goes no, no. the discard pile first. You get it immediately after You that. get it immediately the turn you buy it, you get it. Okay. So that's cool. So anyway, you'll notice that every card, well not every card, but most cards in the game uh, can be played uh, either black or white. So uh, if you go, go ahead and grab a, another card in there, we'll look for one in a little bit. But um, yeah, thanks. Uh, let's see if we can find a familiar. Or, here we go, here's a familiar. So there's an example, Mr. Patterson. He's our, our best buddy. Um, familiars uh, come out and they sit around and uh, they can actually jump, they can be moved from player to player to help them. And they can actually jump in front of demons to stop them from hurting you. But the point is, is that the vast majority of cards you can play as black or white magic. Uh, black magic lets you kill the things in front of you. White magic, which is much more rare, gets put into a pool and you may use it, and each person can use it to help anyone else, but not themselves. White magic can never be used to help yourself. Mm. Oh, only to help other people. So when you play your hand, what's cool is everybody's going to draw their hand and independently, because you're not allowed to talk about what you're doing, mm. you actually are choosing how you're going to play your hand. And the bad guys can either be bound, uh, killed, you know, need to look at it on the screen there. You can, you can bind them, you can kill them, or just let them hit you. And so what's nice about that is there's a lot of decision making. You think, oh, well, I'm just trying to kill. No, you have to really think not only about what you're fighting, but how bad your friend that you're about to screw over is, uh, is doing. Because if you, if, you, if you just let it sit there, they're gonna get hurt. And if you don't, uh, there's another mechanic here that when you play a hand, so I'll just example hand here. Let's go ahead and play. Let's say that I played this hand. We'd all do it simultaneously. We'd all play our hands at the same time. So there is no dis there's not a lot of open discussion until everybody plays their hand. And then you go into a phase where, uh, I, I, if you're, you're on the left of me, I would deal, uh, in this case, six corruption. It's gonna be hard to see on the camera there, but don't worry about it. Um, but I'd also open sigils. So uh, these sigils on the guys actually open and close based on what your black magic tells me. So in this case, I'd open the, like if this was you, I'd go ahead and open these sigils here. Uh, and what's cool about that is the demons are more likely to hit you if your sigils are open, because they need them as gates to get through to attack you. So like, for example, she needs, this card, needs uh, an orange sigil and a, and a uh, uh, purple, uh, purple sigil. But since your orange sigil is closed, even though she would normally come and attack you, she can't because all the sigils she needs aren't open. So, so uh, you're not only deciding how much damage and harm you're gonna put on the person, how much risk you're putting on the person. And, and sometimes, you can get, uh, we lose if any one person has over 20 or more corruption. How do the witches win? How do they, by every right. They just have to, every, there's different scenes and they have different objectives. So like in the primary game, like they sit down and just play with people on normal, the objective is to survive till the end of hour six without dying. 
So you just have to survive the sun. Hence the name Approaching Dawn. So actually, uh, it's a very much story driven game. In the rule book, there's actually an entire uh, short story about the previous witches who, lo who lost, who basically got sucked down to hell. Later on, if you play the game far enough, uh, and you decide, the games can be played out of order, or you can choose to play them as a little campaign. And uh, um, you can eventually even jump down into hell to try to save them, and then you get them as friends to help you later on. All right, so can you tell us a little bit about what it was like designing the game? Where'd you get this idea from? Sure, so uh, I love cooperative games. I hate alpha gamers, because I am one. So I hate, <laughs> I hate managing everybody. Um, simultaneously feel bad about it. And I thought, you know what? I'm, a, I'm an engineer by trade. I said, how can I m mathematically uh, develop a game that is complex in its choices, but simultaneously easy to play? And so that was the focus of the game. And then a few things really just, I love the idea of like a Buffy the Vampire Slayer year where like what you do, what you, what you, you know, the game can be played in a whole bunch of different ways, kind of simulating like a story over the course of the year, but you can always just grab one and play it. So those, those were design choices that I really wanted to have. And so, um, and then I wanted a game where uh, simultaneous play really mattered. Like a lot of times simultaneous play uh, in, in games, I think a lot of people already know what they're gonna do and they just do it. But because you don't know what everyone else is doing in this to such a degree, and they can harm people, uh, um, your choices really start to matter very quickly and it escalates. So that was that was the uh, the basis for the idea. Was like, let's get a cooperative game where it doesn't feel cooperative in the sense that you're harming people and you don't know why people are doing things because maybe their secrets are telling them to do it and they decide that they're gonna go, it's not a directed play, you can choose not to do your secrets, but there's a, there's a re repercussion. But basically the idea is like, is that guy doing that because his secret's forcing him or is he just not catching on? Or? Oh, that's so, always a really interesting kind of uh, social dynamic to add into this game as exactly, well. Exactly, exactly, that's the fun. So, um, yeah, it's, it's great. So those were the reasons that I, I those were the places. I wanted, I wanted, I wanted my friends who don't like cooperative games to sit down and like a game that's cooperative so I could play with them, so it's nice. But yeah, yeah, it's generally, uh, you know, if you want to get into game design, a lot of people do. Uh, pitching at the five minute pitches is the way to start. The, el the elevator uh, kind yeah, of pitch. The elevator kind of pitching. Yeah. And here's why, because uh, if you just go up and ask them to see your prototype, you're taking away their time, but if you do the five minute pitches and they like your stuff, then, uh, then you know you walk into it kind of boomed. You already have like a little bonus because they're actually committing to the time yeah. because they want to. Yeah. And so that's when you know your design is good enough to at least matter. Because any designer is going to sit, uh, any publisher is going to sit down and listen to what you have to say. But you might spin your wheels for years, but if you five minute pitch and they're like, you know, I like this game enough, I want to see it. That's the moment that you say, okay, well, I'm, you know, and that's a great way to get feedback from them. And that's how you build your, uh, your game speed of development. I think there's a thousand games out there with great theme. But uh, my goal is to make a game that has great mechanics that people haven't seen. So this has a lot of mechanics that just people haven't seen before. How, you have a cooperative, ver you, have, you have cooperative magic that people can work together to try to figure out how to use, but there's no alpha gamer because people are making their decisions independently beforehand, right? One of the other neat things about the game is uh, there, are, there are very powerful spells, and you start with a, a little small starter deck, as you, you can empower your most powerful spells by destroying your starter deck, and they're the only things that power the powerful spells. So you can thin your deck down, but if you do it too early, you can't use your powerful spells later. So I figured, what's some ways that you can make a deck building game where the starting cards actually matter as compared to, so there's, there's another neat little concept. So I wanted to make things where people were like, wow, there's actually mechanics here that I haven't seen. Now, what I was told when we were first told about this game was, it's not deck building, they called it deck evolution. That's exactly right, yes. And, and now, where did you get the idea to, you know, most deck builders, you could write this card pile, but you get to use it immediately by putting it on top. So, now, why did you approach that instead of just creating a standard deck builder? Sure, okay, so what I wanted out of the, I wanted to get a game experience that wasn't necessarily about building the deck. That's a component of it. So I figure um, you have well, usually only six hours, so six rounds to play. I want immediate gratification. It actually encourages people to take more powerful spells early, but every point of corruption you have, even though the demons eat it, there's a, there's a you know, it's not a straight linear distribution. It doesn't stagnate. There's a, there's a graduation there. So when, they, when the demon comes, it's gonna make it worse to kill it. 
So I want that early greed to cause tension. And so, oh, okay. so yeah, right? So if somebody's very safe, that actually might help you in the game. But you don't want it so safe that they're not buying stuff for fun. But if I know, oh my gosh, this round, I got this. The other thing is, since things, when you're buying spells, people can say, hey, you know, it would be great if you bought that spell. Cause, or please let me have that spell. And people are like, why? And I'm like, I can't really tell you why, because maybe it's their secret. Or, so like people, I wanted that tension where like people are going, because when you put it into your discard pile, you're like, okay, that's great for later. But when people know that like just a few moments later, they're going to use it, they get, they get a little bit more hungry. The salvation starts to happen. <laughs> And other people are like, oh yeah, that's gonna save our butts, you know? Like, so that's what I wanted out of it. I want that instant moment where like people are like, I'm excited, you know, this is gonna happen. Everybody gets a special ability, by the way, and their own special deck. So every character has got a completely different feel, and they've actually double-sided. So um, on the uh, on their different abilities, one side is able to do a single super powerful once a game ability, and the other side gives you a less powerful every hour ability, and you get to choose who you want, what you which one you want to do. So there, it looks like there's actually 16 different, you know, you know, 16 different combinations in terms of player counts, and so you have tremendous replayability even on each individual scene. Uh, when you were looking for artists, uh, was there? Did you go through a process or anything? I'm. I was originally a, a role playing game designer um, for 10, you know, 12, 14 years ago. And uh, my company, I actually work with the art, the art director on this game, uh, I work, I've worked with forever. We've been uh, companions for, uh, for game design forever. And he, he, we knew this artist forever. So um, I've known him for 10, 12 years. So when we approached WizKids, um, uh, I said, you know, I have this guy who we work with and he is fantastic. I mean, he really pushes the boundaries. And, um, I think that he'd be great for the game. Showed it to them, they're like, yeah, that's, I mean, I don't know, when you get some close-ups, maybe, look, the art, I mean, I know that I'm a designer, but I'm not, I'm not talking about that right now. Just just not for me, but the the graphics are just fantastic. The oh, this art is, yeah, is just I, beautiful. This is some of the, the greatest artwork I've seen on some board games. It's some fantastic, fantastic stuff. And one fun thing that I, uh, uh, and to speak to that, um, he's uh, he's actually uh, um, Asian, and uh we, we had a lot of fun with, with uh, tropes, so we, we inverted a lot of things. So we, we wanted to have a lot of diversity in the, in the game, and that's kind of, we, we had fun with it. So like, the cheerleaders are almost always seen in movies and games as like the mean girl. So she's the nicest girl on the, on the, on the planet, right? Uh, um, the, uh, the alpha, the leader of the whole team is an is a African-American lacrosse player. But like, uh, there's a, um, you know, we wanted to have this like, breadth of experience so that we could get a wide audience, but also play with the tropes a little bit so that people could have fun with that idea instead of it just being like, oh, well, you're doing PC stuff. We aren't doing it because of it. We're doing it because this is who we are. And it was neat to have, you know, like, let's be inclusive because so many of the people in the project are inclusive, but it wasn't like to be inclusive. It was just like natural, like, this is what's supposed to be. Oh, exactly. You know? This was yeah. it's not, not like it a callous marketing strategy. No, no, it was the because, opposite. Is because that's because we're getting life is like this, this, and this is a, and right. this is your key. Right, exactly. Right. Right. So, so that's the the concept was. Uh, so I love that that we brought in all that. It just kind of developed that way naturally, and then people started saying, "Wow, you guys are being really inclusive." We're like, "Oh yeah, I guess we are." I guess it's sort of that's, 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 that's <laughs> actually true. You know, like, and we were like, we weren't even thinking that at all. We're just thinking like, let's take the trips, swim them, and play with you know, make cool games. Oh, expect to see us in the store shows? Fantastic question. Um, it's coming out at Gen Con, and there's actually exclusive promos that will be there available for the people who get it. Oh, excellent. Um, so uh, there's actually an, an entire extra scene in this nice car stock scene. It's, a, it's, a, it's free if you buy it there. Um, and it actually lets you play the Lost Witches before they fell. So they actually, it's a, it's a free scene that basically lets you play, instead of these witches, you play the Lost Witches who, in the story, uh, got sucked down into hell that you go and say it's bit. like a pre it's a prequel, it's a pre -prequel. and then um, Mr. Patterson is the weakest uh, familiar in the game he's also the storyteller so he's actually their familiar who jumps out and, and he constantly is berating you about so like on the back it's very much story driven so like as an example for the scene it's like um, it says it's Halloween and all hell's broken loose Mr. Patterson looks down on the rest of you and the training scenario is like don't you guys do anything bad? So like he's like he's like he's like 
One or more of you witches used magic for personal reasons over the last year, didn't you? Well, didn't you? And, like he's like just giving you grief the whole time. So uh, there's he's got a special promo that will come out at Gen Con as well. Right. Well, thank you so thank much you. for joining us. All right. Uh, Appreciate it. Again, this is the Witching Hour, and this is Ken Shannon, and his game will be available around Gen Con. So uh, if you have a chance, take a look, pick it up. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks. It was a pleasure. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. about to play this and my name is in the book right there Patricia Prebus I helped along with the editing so that the story flows along with the game 